how far would you go for money? Some creators on the platform are ruled by this question, constantly pushing the boundaries of human understanding. And in Chantel Marie's case, the bigger the belly, the bigger the bag. She is what I would describe as a human food vacuum, someone who displays no shame whatsoever. I'm eating my cheat day. <laughs> constantly releasing greasy films on camera that she believes will greater her financial status. However, ladies and gentlemen, this is only nibbling the surface. And what better way to conduct this video than through the only way Chantel knows best? Through large portions of various foods. And in each serving of today's video, we will discover together her problematic behavior, poor discipline, her trouble in love life, disgustingly overshared details, and several more things. But before we dive into the several roles that Chantel is made up of, Allow me to give you a little taster of today's video. But I will warn you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are eating, you better put those knives and forks down, for the beast Chantel is roaming around. Get on my knees, start doing my thing. And um, so I, it comes out both ends. And I had a skirt on. And a G-string. The barf goes projectile all over the wall. The poop goes all over their floor. And I smell bad. That is diabolical. How can she truly say something so disgusting with a mouthful of pasta? The backstory behind this clip is that she was invited to have a threesome with a man and his girlfriend. And in the process of being at their house, she rushed to the bathroom and quote unquote, it came out of both ends. And that is why you limit yourself to one big tasty not several. You'd be surprised to hear that this is barely the worst thing she's admitted to. She once disclosed that she offered herself up as a pro but not for money, but because she was in desperate need of a Whopper cheeseburger. But this is a story for another dish that will be served later in today's video. But with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I worked really hard on today's video. It is just me, a one-man army, doing everything by myself. So I would appreciate it if you did subscribe, because we are trying to hit 100k by September. And if you fail to do so, not to worry, I will send Chantel to clear out your fridge. And don't think she won't sniff out your secret snack drawer. This beast runs wild in the presence of Mars Bars. But now, allow me, your chef, to give you the first serving of today's video. As we've seen, Chantel is very open about her life. However, during her moments of transparency, she seems completely oblivious to how her actions affect others. When Chantel was 15, she started dating a 21-year-old man who simultaneously had a 21-year-old pregnant girlfriend. Keeping in mind, she has disclosed several times to her audience that she has an interest in older men, which springs from her quote-unquote daddy issues. Daddy issues is one thing, but I'm sure you know that you've got much larger issues in your shopping basket. But if you thought Chantel dating a man six years older than her was bad enough, you should see the level of mass in her next problem. Now this is where, ladies and gentlemen, the self-serving side of Chantel began to sizzle through. In one of her videos, she expressed a strong desire to spend the night with her new lover. Predictably, her request was denied, as any responsible parent would do in such a situation. However, Chantel found this response unacceptable and decided to retaliate against her family in a cruel manner. And what was that cruel manner, you might ask? Well, she attempted to get back at her family by faking a suicide attempt. I emptied out half my bottle of, um, I think it was Zoloft I was on, antidepressants or something. I showered the bottle and I said, I'm gonna kill myself. I took half the bottle and I hadn't. As we can see, this is someone who will do anything to get their own way. Someone who lacks empathy for those around her. She is consumed with her own needs and desires. But are we really surprised? I mean, she's as heavy as a cow and built like a woolly mammoth. And this is further demonstrated when she was taken from hospital and committed to a mental institute. And this mental institute, she shared a room with a second person who was suffering with anorexia. This doesn't sound good. You could tell her family really loved her and they would bring her all kinds of candy, big tubs, of gummy bears and just junk food surrounded her bed. They wanted to eat, you know? I had said to her at some point, are you gonna eat those candy? And I think she kind of caught on because she like, she gave them to me. She gave me her candy. So Chantel is really telling us that she took food from a recovering anorexic just to satisfy her own greed. And the way she described it as well, the food surrounded her bed. <sighs> Oh, no, please. Feed me. Mama bear's hungry. Oh, leave my food alone. Mm. It's not yours, it's mine. The beast must feed. Oh, no. The oh, please, it's, it's mine. Feed. 
mean, come on, let's not lie to ourselves. That's probably what happened. Now, while some may label this as a difficult time period, Chantelle labeled it as one of the best experiences of her life. And you know what? Sad story, but it ended up being one of the best experiences of my life. It's kind of sad, Chantelle, that one of your favorite memories is stealing food from a recovering anorexic, someone who needs it way more than you do. Trust me, you've had more than enough love. Now, let me ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. How on earth did she escape that mental institution? Well, that's right, you guessed it. She ate and devoured all the staff members. Now, putting the comedy aside, I would like to ask you one serious question. Could you ever imagine manipulating your sweet grandmother? Because that's exactly what Foodie Booty, aka Chantel, did. The plan was to run away and call my grandmother because I knew my grandma didn't know I was there. And this is bad, but I knew I could manipulate my grandmother into feeling bad and not making me go back there. This is the kind of person who will use anyone like puppets in order to get what she wants, regardless of their feelings. Even till this day, she uses her family and past lovers as talking points in her video for self-gain and views. But if you thought that was bad, ladies and gentlemen, wait until you hear the rest. The one thing Foodie Booty is good at is oversharing, and I'm not talking about the food on her plate, I'm talking about her personal life. While many creators often exaggerate characters to capitalize on shock value, it seems clear that in Chantelle's case, this behavior genuinely reflects her lifestyle. As we previously discussed her supposed threesome, numerous other troubling stories have since emerged. As I mentioned earlier, where she dipped her fingers into the melting pot of prostitution, where she traded foreplay in exchange for some whoppers. I got desperate and asked, called one of my lovers. <laughs> this is like low-key prostitution, but I offered him foreplay if he would come over and bring me um, couple of Whoppers. I think it was Whopper Wednesday. Oh, I guess you could say she had meat hand in hand. But this further reveals the true personality of Foodie Booty, highlighting her desperation and willingness to go to any lengths to satisfy her next cravings for food. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, the stories only got worse from there. Stories like her having sex with a homeless man on a couple of rocks by a lake. I see this guy. He wasn't too scruffy looking, but he was kind of scruffy, you know? He was carrying like a shopping bag and it had like DVDs in it, probably to pawn them. And uh, we did it on the rock near the harbor. I know what you're thinking. What did he smell like? That's what I would wonder. He didn't smell too homeless. Like, you know, he smelled a little, little, little bit like malt vinegar, but. Now, why on earth would he do that? Because I'm horny is not a good enough reason. Do not have any moral compass whatsoever. <laughs> if anything, ladies and gentlemen, I think this further underlines the lack of respect that she has for herself. And you will see that more and more throughout this video. She also admitted to flashing her obese breasts to an old man in public while she was underage. And I suppose the reasoning is quite obvious at this point, I would say. She did it for a candy bar. <laughs> Like, what do you want me to do for a Klondike bar? Name it. I want you to go to the man at the end of the road and I want you to sh <laughs> lift your shirt up and flash him and shove your tits in his face. So, of course, I did it. I'm not proud, but I did it. This further demonstrates her lack of dignity. And as we've learned together up until this point, Chantel Marie is somewhat of a wild animal. Someone who constantly lives, <laughs> someone who constantly lives in their root chakra, living through her natural animalistic instincts. But of course, this behavior plays into a reoccurring pattern. She frequently starts diets only to abandon them, manipulating her audience into feeling sorry for her, and then reverting to her old habits shortly after. This toxic cycle is something we'll delve into later on in the video, as it's quite messy. But speaking of toxic cycles, her love life with strange men is another area for fraught with problems. Now, Pete is believed to be the first serious relationship in Chantel's life, who in 2018 became a usual face on the Foodie Booty channel. At this time, they had already split, but remained friends due to them having gone through so much together and having common interests. Exclusive Christmas offer, $10 off. I'm gonna keep that. There's a whole bunch of coffee Rolos, there's stuff in that bag. Wow, nothing quite like ravaging through dumpsters on a Friday night. But of course, Chantel will be happy with whatever she can get her hands on. Pete and Chantel initially crossed paths at school and then at a call center where they both were employed. Their professional relationship eventually evolved into a romantic one, lasting a substantial six years. But unfortunately, their union came to an abrupt end due to Chantel's struggle with self-control, leading to her infidelity with another man. Many times he would tell me, Pete would tell me, even if you don't love me anymore, I don't know, maybe he sensed it was coming, but he said, even if you don't love me anymore, 
and you wanted to see someone else, I would be totally cool with that. I would be cool with you having different lovers to make you happy. It was very wrong of me to have started talking with um, Bibi before breaking up with him. Chantel met Bibi online and their relationship endured for a couple of years. However, Bibi rarely made an appearance on camera, often only heard in the distant background of her live streams. Despite this discreet presence, their relationship ultimately ended due to Bibi's aspiration to start a family and his discomfort with Chantel's public persona as an influencer. So, um, Bibi and I decided to break up. I think a lot of you could see our dynamic and it's changed a lot <laughs> over the years. However, this relationship was nothing compared to the drama that the next man brought to the table. Meet Nada, ladies and gentlemen, or Nada, however you say it. But this man is considered one of the worst partners that Chantel ever involved herself with after they met on Tinder. From the very beginning, Chantel referred to him as the Egyptian man. And this Egyptian man from the very beginning displayed his true nature. But despite the obvious red flags, Chantel's desperation for attention led her to ignore them. He loves BBW. That's not the tea. The tea is hot. It's, it's, it, we need to let the tea cool off. Okay. So the Egyptian guy is very, is it like, I don't know if it's like all Egyptian men, but he's very, um, fucking pushy, like, like bossy, like tells me what to do all the time. But she continued to ignore his red flags over and over again. Arab men can have a temper and tendency to be controlling. Yeah, I know, but they're sexy. <laughs> oh, God. Because he's way too controlling. Like, he's so controlling and just weird. But it wasn't unusual for her to become addicted to things that were ultimately harmful to her. After initial online interactions, she eventually would meet up with him in person. Despite disregarding numerous red flags, the reality was about to catch up to her. I did go over to the Egyptian guy's house. So this guy is fucking crazy. Like, yeah, I ended up tiptoeing out of there when he fell asleep. But I did like, he busted out like a bunch of lines. Uh, I know. Um, I think I did maybe like five lines, four or five lines. He's kind of really rough, like he was rough at one point. Oh really? Did some lines did we Chantel? Of cocaine apparently. Part of me wishes she would have said ketamine, you know, with it being a horse tranquilizer and all, would have been perfect for a beast her size. But despite her continued ignorance, she found herself falling deeper into the relationship. Her audience grew increasingly frustrated with how quickly she disregarded their concerns, acting and flaunting about as if she was under complete control. But let's be honest with ourselves Chantel, self-control would be a luxury at this point. I didn't do anything wrong. So I don't care. <laughs> Coke is an illegal drug. Yeah, it is. It is. I don't know if it's wrong. I mean, I don't think it's, it's obviously not healthy, but how bad are some of the prescription drugs people take? Wow, isn't that a shocker? Chantel showing her arrogant side once again. But you know what? I can't lie to myself. As they say, a line a day keeps the doctor away. Oh, veterinarian in her case. But I want you all to bear this in mind, as this will be important later. But within a few days after their first encounter, Chantel began featuring her new creature on her channel, and even took on the role of being financially responsible for him. It was obvious to her audience that he was just in it for the money, but despite her entire audience warning her, she still continued to ignore their concerns, and did what any person with an IQ of a brick wall does best. Offered him a platform on YouTube to establish his own revenue stream, where he would display his unique share skills, which, to be honest with you, this looks like something that once rested in the belly of the beast. And shortly after this, ladies and gentlemen, is when tragedy struck. Like, you don't not call me all night. What the hell? How can that even happen? You're not even thinking about me? <laughs> like, no. It doesn't fly with me. As Nada was no longer responding to Chantel, and this caused her to spiral out of control and even go as far as driving to his house in a rage. I don't think anyone was home. I don't, I don't know. Like, he has his room, which was dark, but I mean, if you're in the room with somebody, it's gonna be dark. I didn't hear any noise. Um, his kitchen light was on, the door was locked. I'm just losing my mind. Like, I don't feel like I deserve that. After everything I've like been through with this person in the past three weeks, I don't feel like I deserve that, you know? Even if my mind is running away and it's my fault and I'm overreacting, like, this is just like a sign, a bad sign for me that this is toxic already. What you are witnessing, ladies and gentlemen, is Chantel running back to her audience after she ignorantly disregarded their concerns, questioning herself if her audience was right all along. However, 
he eventually responded to her, and she reverted back to her old desperate self. This pattern repeated itself multiple times, with the couple breaking up three times within just a month of knowing each other. At times, she would even go live and vent about him, highlighting the mistreatment she claimed to endure. So what did Chantel do to fix this situation? Well, she'd go over his house for a talk, and ended off the night by doing some really hard drugs. So, it was like two nights, like not every single night that I was with him we did hard stuff, it was like the one night, and then like another night was like the bad, bad, bad night, where we just did like everything. <laughs> it's not funny, but it just made me like really sick. Like I was sick like for like two days like in bed. Now remember earlier on when she completely disregarded her audience's concerns about her hilarious encounters with drugs? Well it wasn't long after until reality started to settle in for Chantel. I'm pretty sure. That I'm addicted to cooking. Shortly after this, Chantel had claimed to be rehabilitated and was doing better than ever, apparently. That was, of course, until she had discovered that Nada had a new mistress in his life. And that new woman was named Dee Dee, who was once a viewer of Chantel's daily shit shows. And after she'd learned this new information, she warned Dee Dee through a live stream that Nada is not the man she thinks he is. However, Chantel was missing something. Her self-pride was one thing, but... Her breathing machine came at a close second, so she travelled to his house in an attempt to retrieve the item. And I guess you could say, she needed it as badly as she needed to breathe. I need my machine! Fuck you. Fuck you. What a piece of shit. It was a brilliant time in the foodiverse, as, <laughs> as both were live streaming simultaneously and gave viewers the opportunity to watch the drama unfold from two different perspectives. But it turned out, Nada was withholding the breathing machine from Chantel and was busy with another bird in his nest. And of course, as expected, Chantel was a furious beast. You have another fucking woman there having wine, you stupid! Fucking gonorrhea filled piece of shit! Shortly after this, a concerned viewer called the police and was able to retrieve her breathing machine, but not in one piece. Shortly after this, she went home and devoured herself on livestream and complained about Nada leaving her and that she apparently gives awesome head. However, their saga didn't end there. They continued to air out their grievances back and forth on livestream, and at one point, Nada even showed Chantel's dirty underwear for the world to see. I know, because I've always wanted to see Foodie Booty's underwear. Yum yum. <laughs> Things escalated further when Nada threatened to file a restraining order against her, and in response, Chantel rushed to the police station to detail the mistreatment she had endured. But shortly after that, ladies and gentlemen, she retracted her statement, as she claimed she wanted to move on with her new life. And let me tell you, what a new life it was. So Chantel, feeling desperate and lonely, she began searching for a new lover, and it wasn't long until she found said lover. Meet Sala, ladies and gentlemen. A new lover that she claimed to keep off the internet. But of course, our big girl Chantel, once again, went back on her word. I have been seeing somebody, and they are... Um... It's just kind of really gone really fast. We've been talking a lot, like video, pretty much all night since we've met. But ladies and gentlemen, Chantel's newfound relationship was moving faster than her digestive system. And it turns out after only two days of talking, Salah wanted to fly Chantel out to Kuwait to get married. Now any sane person would simply deny this request. Two days of knowing somebody and now wanting to get married is completely ridiculous. But not in the eyes of our big girl of course, because she was willing to change her entire life for a man that she's only just recently met. So that was when it was clear ladies and gentlemen that foodie boot he had joined a new religion for this man as you can see i purchased my first hijab today um this is just a two-piece set i have decided to try to be more try to adopt different values that religion being muslim and just one month after knowing salah they indulged themselves in a courthouse marriage it's safe to say things were moving rather quickly for chantelle and salah but it only moved quicker from there they invested into an apartment and officially converted herself to islam today chantelle my pretty wife uh, become officially uh, muslim however with chantelle's new married life claiming to have changed as a person she was still the beast she once was being a newly converted muslim it's expected to have a few missteps, but one thing Allah hates is overeating, and Chantel till this day does the same thing, eating over and over again. And with this newfound husband, she apparently developed an ego bigger than her belly. And listen carefully, ladies, why would Salah 
go for you girls when he has a Canadian queen like me. You make no sense. Anyway. But this wasn't the only time she displayed a large ego, as she went on to claim people are jealous of her life, apparently. They're all seething with jealousy. They're so pathetic, because every single thing they predicted in their dumb conspiracies is wrong. I'm in Kuwait. I'm in Kuwait. What are you going to do? Huh? Yeah, Chantel, we're definitely jealous of you, love. I mean, I've always wanted to be someone who needed assistance climbing a curb. Or even someone who just simply got out of breath trying to get ketchup out of a bottle. However, ladies and gentlemen, with her newfound ego, hypocrisy also started to slip through. And I'm not talking about her constant diet shifting, which we are going to go hard on in a few minutes. I'm talking about her delusional comments she makes in her videos and live streams. Where she claims apparently, ladies and gentlemen, that she would change for no man. You don't change for any man. You don't change for anyone. You change for yourself. Nobody knows the true dynamic of our relationship. Yeah, okay, Chantel, sure. You moved halfway across the world, got married to someone that you've only known for 30 days, and converted to Islam? Yeah, okay. You'd never change for anybody, right? But in a twist of fate, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out that our friend Sala had bigger plans than going down on our Canadian queen. My husband! He cheated on me. He admitted it today. God, yeah. What a shocker. I suppose it's slightly embarrassing now, Chantel, isn't it? The unearned ego of yours was all for nothing. But ladies and gentlemen, despite her failing love life, oversharing of details, it doesn't compare to the main issue at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, for years, Foodie Beauty has followed the same template. To begin diets to only find herself face planted in Greece a few days later. The cycle begins as follows. She starts off with a new weight loss journey, shortly after breaks down, then binges herself in cheeseburgers. <laughs> and it's not long after her grub crawl that she realizes she needs to lose weight. And then the cycle continues. And this became a vicious cycle that everyone recognises until this day. So let's delve deeper into that. She has repeatedly claimed that her weight is affecting her health and has promised to make changes. But over the span of her channel, she has embarked on several weight loss journeys. Her initial efforts were inspiring to her followers as she tried various lifestyles such as keto, OMAD and water fasting. However, she often reverted to her old habits just after a few days and her excuses for stopping were even more sad. Dieting, I'm sick of stressing about it. Like I said before, like I'm sick of like counting calories, measuring food, it's just so monotonous, you know? You know, just worrying about how much counting macros and- You, you, you were unable to count the calories, but somehow you're more than able to count all the men you've been with. <laughs> Oh, guys. But sadly, ladies and gentlemen, she has since removed her older videos and leaving us with pretty much little to reference. But luckily for us, not much has changed in the present. Releasing videos such as saving my life by losing 200 pounds, my plus sized life. Now do not be fooled, ladies and gentlemen, as this is nothing more than a perfectly orchestrated plan to make consistent views on her channel. And you will see that shortly. She proceeded to post several more videos exercising in order to gain trust with her audience, which she succeeded to follow through in. A walking weight loss challenge, Two hours of walking. Bloody hell. She's really stepped up her game. Losing 200 pounds the fun way. I mean, look at that. She even treated herself to a beachside walk. And everything just seemed to be going great for Chantel. But if you are familiar with the foodie beauty verse, I'm sure you can predict what comes next. She followed up with a video titled, I can't walk. With the thumbnail reading, so much pain with her sat in a wheelchair. Well, there she goes again, ladies and gentlemen, wheeling herself to enjoy some Five Guys. Or Five Guys. And of course, we are all aware of this by now. It's time to reset the cycle. She followed up with several mukbangs, eating junk food once again, and falling back on her promises to lose 200 pounds, completely undoing her quote-unquote hard work. And people are sick of it. I don't understand how she's not tired of her own BS, and she's been doing and saying the same thing for years, and probably her whole life now. She followed up with the same strategy three months later. With a weight loss vlog in her newfound motivation, she was determined to lose some weight. But in each thumbnail following that weight loss video, it was clear that her meal portions just got bigger and bigger and bigger 
and bigger. However, nothing truly changes, ladies and gentlemen. She lacks a significant amount of self-discipline, which is evident in her manner of speaking, often disingenuous and generally ignorant of her own health. No, I said no more uh, like unhealthy, huge mukbangs. But I'm also allowed to change my mind on that. And just from this clip alone, it's clear her intentions are not from a place of authenticity. Chantel, you will change your mind, as you have always done. And your channel has reached a place where even your own viewers don't believe the words you speak. And this clip right here is evidence once again. In bed praying. Like praying and praying and praying until I fall asleep and you know, asking for mercy and help to feel better, promising to take care of my health and ask for forgiveness for damaging my health the way I have, taking it for granted, like a joke. So she claims she's in bed praying, ladies and gentlemen, asking for forgiveness, claiming she will promise to take care of her body. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Do you think she's stuck to the words that she preaches? Come on now. A big girl Chantel could never! Not even 14 days later, and she's back to thrusting shit down her throat once again. Like the chili just like soaks inside the fries. I mean, that's just more than predictable, if I may say so myself. And present day now, ladies and gentlemen, she seems to have totally given up on creating diet content. In fact, she's going to carry on doing McBangs. I don't want to come on here and explain why I'm eating a cheeseburger. I don't want to come on here and explain my weight, loss or gain or whatever the heck. Um, and be like, I gained five, I, I gained half a kilo this week, guys. No, I don't want it. And I don't want to, you know, also go balls to the wall and uh, super strict on a diet. And I don't enjoy doing that content whatsoever. I don't enjoy it. So it depresses me even more. It makes me feel like losing weight and getting healthy is like a punishment. It feels like a punishment when I do that. I want to just go back to to learn how to be like a normal person. Like look at someone like Salah. They don't they don't have to count calories. They don't have to worry about, you know, they just they just listen to their normal hunger cues, I guess. I don't know. Yes, Chantel, but Salah doesn't have a food addiction. <laughs> the reason he doesn't need to count his calories is because he is not morbidly obese. Of course, people who exercise and regularly hit the gym also count their calorie intake. But for you to be a person who lives their life not counting calories is going to first take a lot of discipline. In a short and revelation, it turns out that her husband is not the cleanest of humans either. Um... He doesn't play in his own shit. He wanted to shit on a stupid whore. That's different. Was a shit on a whore, did you say? Was a shit on a whore? Well, okay. Well, well, that's slightly concerning, if I may say so myself. And I'm sure you can see Chantel will never successfully complete a weight loss journey. <laughs> She's been trying for years now, and she continuously goes through the same toxic cycle constantly. And us audience members have to sit down and just watch her slowly destroy herself. And surprisingly, even though this video was a bit of a deep dive, I only covered about 10% of Chantel Marie. But with that said, ladies, gentlemen check out my other videos they're a little bit different to this one and please subscribe to the channel because i worked really hard on this video hope you guys have a good day hope you enjoyed i'll see you all in the next one check these out now